Recently, Oasis announced their reunion, and their tour sold out instantly, crashing servers, bringing dynamic pricing systems into disrepute. They sold 1.4 million tickets in a matter of moments. It is obvious to me that they very likely could have more than doubled that, given the huge demand. Now, this is interesting to me for a lot of reasons. Oasis have constantly been run down and sneered at by the establishment and by music critics. As my friend Morgoth put it recently, Oasis were one of us, while Blur has become the government. I remember the 1990s well. I was a teenager, and they were undoubtedly better times. Safer times, less diverse times, less polarised times. In a sense, Oasis vs. Blur was the first ballast in a culture war which was then only latent and unstated. While the media presented it as a war between two bands on an equal footing, in reality, not that you'd know it from the BBC, Blur only sold 4.4 million albums in the UK, while Oasis sold 16.4 million. It wasn't even close. But Blur was what Guardian readers could listen to and remain smug about themselves. Oasis made them feel uncomfortable because Noel was outspoken, never politically correct, properly working class, northern, and a mank who didn't really give a shit and never has. You been in a shop, so you must have a mask. Yeah, it was good actually. I've enjoyed the summer. I mean, it's fucking a fucking virus bullshit and the masks and all that is fucking depressing but so you so if uh, you've been out you've been in a shop so you must have a mask i don't wear a mask now have you not what so like aren't you meant to buy law in a shop but no one's enforcing no. it? is that what's going on no you're not because it's uh, the, the whole fucking the whole thing is bollocks you know you're, you're supposed to wear them in selfridges yet you can fucking go down the pub and be surrounded by every fucking con you know what i mean and it's like an, oh well actually we don't have the virus in the pubs, but they have it in Selfridges. All oh, right. Like I was going up to Manchester the other week and fucking some guy's going, can you put your mask on, on the train? And I was like, uh, and they said, because uh, the transport police will get on, they'll find you a thousand pounds, but you don't have to put it on if you're eating. So I was saying, all oh, right, so this killer virus that's sweeping through the train is going to come and attack me, but it's going to see me having a sandwich and go, leave him. Yeah, but I... I... <laughs> fucking hell. But... Without sounding too corny, it was a band that was... It was made by the people. You know, it's we were... actually what people did want yeah. instead of what people thought yeah, people yeah. wanted. Well, like, I, you know, I, I, do, I, I have this argument all the time. To say to somebody in 1993, where's guitar music going? They're not going to go, right, we want this fucking band from Manchester with a fucking singer who's 19, right, Larry, the fucking... The, He's writing the songs, he's ripping off everybody who's fucking dead. Uh, the, the other three lads look like plumbers, you know, but it's, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you couldn't invent it, you know, so, yeah, who, who, who knew, you know, who knew? Hello, uh, is Mr Gallagher there, please? Who's it? It's, uh, is that Liam? Yeah. Hello, Liam, it's uh, Jeremy Vine from Newsnight here. How are you doing? I'm fucking sound, how are you? Uh, not bad, are you coming out? I'm a fuck, it's raining, mate. Why aren't you going to Chicago? Hello, Liam. I tell you what is frightening. It's like we've got, you know, Trump and fucking smoking Joe over the over the over mm. the Atlantic, who are marginally more embarrassing than these two, fucking Rishi Sunak and the other fella. My father was a tilt baker. That <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> Now, yes, it's true, Oasis freely ripped off the Beatles and the Kinks. Yes, Noel would frequently rhyme face and place. Yes, he has stubbornly stuck to churning out the same type of music for a long time. But there was something real about it. 
So many times in my youth I'd be at a pub. Everyone there was belting out their anthems, drunk, in unison. I did not appreciate it at the time, that it was the end of something rather than the start of something. It brings a tear to my eye. Oasis are a part of what I've come to think of recently as an authentic, vernacular, popular British culture, in the same vein as Enid Blyton or the Carry On films, which I'll make videos about soon as well. In vernacular culture, the familiar is comforting. People do not want novelty or innovation or the exotic but that which confirms them securely in their own identity. It is not high art made to push the boundaries, but peasant music for the masses to help them cope with life. And I think this should be celebrated and not disdained. It is something people can call their own. In a sense, it is good that Oasis never made it big in America. It doesn't belong to them, it belongs to us. Now that Oasis have come back, there's been a huge pouring out of emotion, and I am not surprised to see it. Let's watch this little video on the BBC site and consider for a moment how much this means to people. So uh, I've just managed to get a ticket for Oasis and I'm totally like, I'm red, I'm blotchy, I've just spent 30 minutes crying. <laughs> like before they announced the reunion, like everything everything mattered work mattered you know um i had you know the, the stress of like owning a house and the, everything mattered so much and now i've got a ticket nothing ever mattered and nothing will ever matter again and now initially i thought this man was pathetic and there's a sense in which he is but at another level why is this band so important to him and the answer is provided by some of our other interviewees here. Let's listen to them. I just managed to get my tickets for um, Oasis at Manchester Heaton Park. I went a bit crazy, went for VIP tickets. They did cost a bit, but after 15 years, I don't really care. The start, got the albums, I've seen them at Nebworth, Main Roads, loads of famous gigs. And I, I don't know, it's like all their songs. It's like they remind me of the 90s. And I love the 90s. Uh, it just reminds me of like certain moments of my life sort of thing, which sounds a bit OTT, but you know, hearing those songs, it, it just takes you back. The 1990s is a reminder of what this country was, which people liked, and more poignantly, of what it's become, which people do not like. I do not think that we, as people, who want to return to a more sensible and centred Britain, should sneer at all this. There's a sense in which this cultural moment of Oasis coming back is registering a widespread feeling in the country that things have got worse and that we would really rather they went back to how they were. Back when we had pubs, back when people could have a smoke outside without Keir Starmer trying to arrest them, back when almost everyone was British and not from Bamalia. There was a scenario in which Oasis coming back might have had a kind of feel-good feeling it could have been a, a comeback story for labor 2.0 the return of the blair era the feel-good years but that's not what happened and that's not where we are excuse the pun but nobody thought we would be here now if you like this video be sure to like and subscribe you can join the channel for thousands of hours of past shows in the archive and hundreds of videos if you have any questions, you can leave a super chat or a super thanks, and I'll be sure to pick it up during my weekly office hours, which run every Tuesday afternoon. I also provide courses at the academic agency, which I encourage people to buy. Thousands of students now have taken the trivium to improve their skills in writing, logic and rhetoric. Just three of many courses available. Buy it now. But most importantly of all, friends, get out.